Jamie, we were going to talk about the Ranfurly Shield today. We were going to talk about the fact that only 2,000 people, less, probably 1,000, turned up to watch it. And what a shame that was, given it was a cracking game and everything else. But obviously, events have overtaken us. You are one of the few that's been able to connect and call the Hawks Bay CEO, who now has his phone off. So that's the best way to respond to this, isn't it? To do the ostrich and pretend nothing's going on. So let's break it down to start with. What? Oh, and no pun intended. What do we make of the fact, first and foremost, that the shield broke? Oh, I mean, it's it's disgraceful, really, that this has happened, and it's it's not even the first time this has happened in the last no, few years. Not. You know, no. we had we had the Crusaders doing it um, the other year with a trophy that had deep, deep meaning uh, to the people that had had made it for different for different reasons, but still was like not a great look it was used and, as a bottle and opener and is what it was right exactly yeah yeah and and now this now this has happened and look man i i'm still playing club rugby i know what happens after games and i think if you jamie have we any, all do sl- we're all any, adults mate come on exactly exactly we're all adults and also i'm very much a believer that accidents happen and if you're going to ha- take a piece of wood and drop it on a, on a concrete floor, and that's what they've said has happened. And I, you're right, I did talk to Jay Campbell, Hawks Bay Rugby CEO, last night, and he did. He had a pretty compelling case that I, because I, I thought about it, you know, I saw that, that press release at first and thought, oh, come on, guys, like, what really happened? But he said to me, well, you know, the only way it could really end up in the, in the state that it's in is if it got dropped on its point. And I sort of came to agree with him. I think the context that was missing out of that is that uh, all those guys had been on the piss for about 12 hours uh, in, 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 in between when they won it and when it got broken. And I think that that's the issue that Hawks Bay and also New Zealand rugby is going to kind of having going to have a hard time really just kind of admitting. Really well, they won't that. admit it. And this is the worst all... thing about it. Okay, look, there's a couple of things but... about this. I don't mind the fact that they had a 12-hour, 24, three-day, four-week, two-month party. I don't care. I don't mind the fact that they behave like bozos and buffheads, like my teenage son and his mates down in Dunedin, who are students who do the same thing. I don't mind all of that. I, 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 look, we've all done it. And I, and I also understand when the euphoria of sports teams and all of that. What is wrong here? is the attempted cover-up and the continued BS and the lies that New Zealand rugby have done for decades. We had Darren Shand on the program, the All Black manager, about, I don't know, four weeks ago or so, and he said his biggest single regret, Jamie, is the covering up they did with Jimmy Cowan. He said that if they had have actually acted like adults and men and handled that situation, well, then Jimmy would never have descended to the place that he descended, and now he's actually in a great place and all of that kind of stuff. Rugby has forever tried to cover up its sins. So all they're doing is digging themselves a bigger hole. Now, if I can I can actually, you could get a thousand bits of wood and drop them off a table onto a floor. They're not going to split in two like that, mate. Somebody fell on it. That's okay, Jamie. We all understand that, as you say, it's an accident. What's not an accident is the attempt to pretend what went on wasn't what went on when we all know what went on. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, I 100 100- agree with that but I don't think it's just a rugby problem I think that's a New Zealand problem I think that's that's very much the way that we deal with our issues uh, as a society and it's something that perhaps at least because we're in a position to bring this out into the cold hard light of day that we can help kind of change that because the way that uh, we as a society you know have to uh, cover things up and, and and not talk about them um, is much to our great detriment. I mean, this is a pretty big sort of <laughs> conversation that sort of goes beyond the realms of sport, but that's the way I see it. And, and that's why I think issues in rugby uh, become as big as they do because it is it is our national game. Yeah. And 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 for all the for all the chat that we do every week about how it's it's dying and 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 things like that, it still does very much represent us as a society. So I think that this is something that maybe we can sort of learn from as a community. Uh, around this. I'm sorry to get a little bit wishy-washy hey, Mark, on not, it, but that, that, is, that is how I'm feeling. I'm not apportioning blame. I'm not pointing fingers here, but what I would really like is I'd like one of these players, I've got a lot of respect for Brad Weber, for example, as a player and as a person. I like what he stands for. I like his values. I would like somebody like him just to put his hand up and front up and say, listen, we apologise for the damage done to that thing. Yeah, we had a bit of a party and we acted a bit the fool and all of that. And everyone would forgive that and they'd laugh about it. But now, of course, because somebody in that state decided that they would either 
manufacture a photo where they've spread white powder over a table in lines on the shield, which looks as though somebody's been snorting drugs. And it looks, I'm not saying it's happened, it's an allegation, of course, and think that that's funny to put on social media. So there's one or two things. They're either snorting drugs off the thing or they are manufacturing a photo to make it look as though they are and they're putting it on social media. Either way, Jamie, how much brain has gone into that, for example? Well, that's the most disappointing thing for me is how stupid the whole thing is. And I mean, we, how, how many stories have you and I heard about the Ramfield Shield over its history? Oh, everyone's and humped been, and bumped and jumped on it. Of course, and mate, yes. Exa- exactly, exactly. But what, what disappoints me the most is someone's been dumb enough to, to, to film it and then share it with everybody. I mean, how stupid can you be? Well, if, Valentine if any, Holmes had a photo section... the other day, Jamie, with a bag of coke in his mouth, right? I mean, you're if not there's... talking about Mensa students here, mate. We're talking about rugby and league players. Exactly, exactly. And I think that if there should be any ramifications that come out of this, it should be put just for those guys just for simply being as dumb uh, as they are here. Uh, in terms of uh, an a public apology, I think one's coming because, you know, it, it, it did. this all did happen yesterday. And um, I, I'm sure that, you know, the Haw- Hawks Bay have the reason why Jay's probably gone to ground on this is because he's just waiting for some legal advice because it is now a matter that could potentially involve the police. Uh, and you know that's not a good that's not a good sign at all. Um, I mean, if nothing else, it should be involving drug-free sport in New Zealand because I I feel like they should probably be cruising around to um, each of these guys' houses, and drug testing them today, today. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they, you've got you, they they have a game this weekend, uh, and um, you know if there's any integrity in, in the drug testing process here, I mean I think this is the most obvious way of being able to show it. Uh, but I mean. Back to your original point, the thing you said at the very start, though, and I mean, this is what I, I've taken out of all this, because we can talk about how grubby this whole thing is and and and, and, and lines and, and, and broken, you know, drunken idiots and, and things like that. I mean, like, that's just rugby culture. Uh, and as much as New Zealand rugby have t- tried to convince us that they've changed the image on this whole thing, it's pretty obvious that they, it, it still very much exists. But to me... And I'm going to ask you this question, you know, what's the sadder side, a broken Ranfilly shield or the fact that Wellington defended it in front of, what, a half a dozen people every time they had it for the last year and a half? You know, what's what's worse? Because to me, the, the, this story is probably going to last about a week, you know, before they glue it back together. And that, to me, just sums up the state of provincial rugby at the moment. And it's unfortunate because it's something that I grew up with, it's something you grew up with. It's something that, you know, used to pack out stadiums. And now it's been resorted to the biggest story about provincial rugby this year that we're going to have is us sitting here talking about a bunch of drunken bozos and what they've done to a treasured uh, piece of, of New Zealand rugby history uh, that's now just going to become a, become a punchline.